go ahead and count here. Boom cell. Bring the boom cell. So again, John Wood, it's the little details that are vital. It's the little things that make big things happen. John Wood, he's one of my favorite. Best college basketball coach of all time. Arguably up there with Vince Lombardi is overall just best coach of all time. John Wooden saying, the little things are what make the big things happen. So you can, you can look at that in all aspects of life. The little things in school, little things with your family, those are what bring happiness, those are what bring success. Whether or not you do homework, how you'll do well on a big test. Now it's the same thing with a like list. The little things in a like list that'll get you that thousand dollar order. It's the little things with a like list that'll get you a uh, a galley to a signature upgrade. So some of you guys heard last time some of the little things. And I bet you some of you guys went out and utilized them, saw that your like list grew. I knew someone in our office, uh, Mac, Mac Shannon, Mac here. So Mac came and told me uh, two days after this talk that her like list just exploded after it. That's because I knew that uh, he utilized the things I talked about. So it's the little things that are gonna make the big things happen. So the three keys to a like list. First is building. Oh. Yeah, maybe we yes. should change. One second. So anyway, we can turn off the front lights here. Oh, well, I changed it anyways. Thanks, <laughs> nice. all right. Here we All right, so the first, building a list. Awesome. The next, well, again, building it. Obviously, the more pieces you put on there, the bigger of an order it's going to be. All right, you have that initial big order, and then you can drop down. So if you guys started with a studio set, you don't have much wiggle room. You're probably going to sell pieces. If you start with a four-piece like list, you're probably going to sell one or two pieces. Now, if you start with a 10, 12, 15-piece like list, that's gonna give you the opportunity to sell eight, nine, 10 pieces. And then upgrading. Upgrading is how I did $20,000 for SC2. I still do a lot of crypto owners. So I do a lot of upgrades. Who sees a lot of crypto owners? So you guys are gonna do a lot of upgrades. I was just talking to Jake Yale in our office and he's saying how now we've seen a lot of crypto owners. I told him, hey Jake, get unbelievably good at an upgrade and you'll hit your goal for SC2. All right, if you guys seen a lot of crypto owners, get good at that upgrade. So when it comes to building the list, oh, added that slide, sorry. One tip on when to start with the like list. I know some people were asking about this the other day. So the one time you can start if you're selling a set, Mrs. Jones, would you like to go with this homemaker today? Why, in fact, I would. You start a like list right after that, okay? Don't write up that order right there. Don't be like, awesome, here's a thousand dollar order. And you're like super psyched, you're like, yeah, 964 CPO, grand day, here we go. No, you say, awesome. Now let me show you some of our other pieces. What I like to do right now is build, some, build something called a like list. Now this isn't anything you're necessarily gonna buy today, just stuff you're interested in. First piece on that like list, take a guess. Homemaker. And then you go from there. If someone's buying a homemaker, you think they like Cutco? You think they might like cookware? You think they might like flatware? You think they might like an entertainer pack? Some gift sets for other people? Maybe a starter set for their kids? So you build a like list right then. If you sell an ultimate set, I guarantee you you're gonna build a massive like list after that. The other day I sold a, a, uh, my first ultimate ever. It was right after Austin Meeker's ultimate talk. So, guy knows what he's talking about. And uh, right after that, I built a like list. $700 like list on top of the ultimate set. They love Cutco. So if you sell a set, begin building a like list right there. Now if you drop down and they're not buying a set, you go all the way through, and then you just build a list after they stand out all the starter sets. Again, just like a traditional like list would look. And then the last way would be if you're seeing a Cutco owner, you just go right to a like list. You show them a preferred customer upgrade, which I'll talk to, talk to you about at the end. Now uh, you go right to the like list. Now when it comes to building the list, again, the customer must believe they're building a like list, not a buy list. 
You need to be their personal shopper. I talked to you guys last time about if you went to an, into a Nike store, the guy was like, don't worry about the price. In fact, we don't even have price tags. Just go ahead and take everything you like and I'll give you a really awesome deal. You throw like eight pairs of shoes, 20 shirts and jerseys, just a bunch of Nike gear. And then he'd give you a really sweet deal. And that's because you bought into a like list, just stuff you're interested in. That's what you need your customer to do. You need to be their shopping assistant, not their salesman. Also begin gathering those hot buttons right away. One great way to build rapport is talk about what they like to cook. Mrs. Jones, what do you like to cook? Are they a vegetarian house? Do they barbecue a lot? Do they like meats? Does she cook because she has to? Does she cook because she likes to? Or does she cook because she loves to? We have a set for all three of those. That's a really, really great way to build rapport. And you know what? She says she makes the best something she bakes. They're like, Mrs. Jones, you got some time right now? Maybe we can whip it up. Get some brownies on the demo. That's always awesome. You always want to be building and rebuilding value in each piece. So we have the names and uses, which builds value. And then when you begin a like list, they've heard some prices by then. They've heard about some sets. It's been a while since they've heard the names and uses of the pieces. So when they're putting pieces down, rebuild value in those. And remember, the more pieces they add, the sweeter of a deal you can give them, and the more cut code they're gonna get for free. So make it a win-win situation. Be sure to show everything. So some things you wanna say when building. One of the biggest keys, number the page one to 10. The easiest thing you can do if you utilize nothing else, utilize numbering the page one to 10. It is so easy, like I, I don't even know how to say how easy it is. So just numbering the page. It's like in elementary school, numbering it one to 100. The teacher just said, write down everything you know. You tried to get to 100. She didn't say write down 100, she said write down all you know. You tried to get to 100. By numbering the page one to 10, Mrs. Jones is gonna attempt to get to 10. Then when she gets to five, six, seven, number of more, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Get her to go to 15. Challenge Mrs. Jones. Most housewives aren't challenged ever. They enjoy a good challenge. Now before you build the list, now what I like to do with my customers is build something called a like list. This isn't anything you're necessarily going to buy today, just stuff you're interested in. Mrs. Jones, let's say cut goes flying from the sky. Handles first, of course. What would you go outside and grab before your neighbors would? <coughs> That's how you should open up every like list. That's how you get a customer to buy into a like list and not a buy list. Two easy questions you can ask on every like list. How many and what else? Four words, gonna be an infinite amount of CPO. Ben Skemper, the manager in our office, all he said was how many? It was his second appointment. Customer's like, I'll take a homemaker. Oh, and Ben's like, hey, my manager said to ask how many. So he's like, Mrs. Jones, how many do you want? Oh, you know what, great question. Yeah, I do have three kids, so uh, you know what, three more. Four homemakers. Or, because he said two words. How much CPO are those two words worth right there? 3,000 CPO for two words. I wish it was that easy all the time. Now I'm not saying every time you're gonna say how many, you're gonna get three more homemakers. Hey, but I bet you there's someone out here that is. You don't know if it's gonna be you unless you ask, right? Imagine if someone just throws one more trimmer on every order. It's an extra 50 CPO every order you have. Who here would want to up their average order by 50 with two words? I know I would. That could change your push. That could take you from a 10K push to a signature room push with two words. The other two words are what else? Can everyone say how many? How many? What else? What else? All right, so I know all you guys can say it, so I know all you guys can utilize these four words. What else is how you're gonna build your list? 
What else is how you're going to take it from four pieces to eight pieces? It's how you're going to take it from two pieces to ten pieces. Just by saying, what else? When you go to Starbucks, and the person there says, what else? So I told you guys the other day, I went there and I was feeling groggy. I'm just like, I need my coffee, that's it. But I was eyeballing that chocolate chip banana bread, that moist, moist chocolate chip banana bread from Starbucks. And uh, I was eyeballing it, but I'm like, no, can't eat that stuff. Uh, and I walk up, I'm like, can I get my uh, venti iced coffee? And she's so enthusiastic, she's like, of course, uh, what else? I'm like, yeah, all right, chocolate chip banana bread, please. <laughs> but if she would have said anything else, or is that all today? I would have said yes, or no, nothing else. But what else? I was like, I can't say no to what else. She was like, what else? And I'm like, no. <laughs> she would have been like, uh... If she would have said, would you like anything else today, I could say no. What else? That's going to grow your list. And then you always want to be recommending at least four pieces every time. So after she builds her list and she's like, oh, nothing more today. Mrs. Jones, do you mind if I just recommend a few of my customers' favorite pieces? And recommend the pieces you found your customers really love. A few I always recommend, table knives. And always stainless. Our traditional table knives, they're cute. They're nice at like fast start. But once you're out of your fast start, you're not selling traditional table knives. You're selling stainless table knives. And if you're not, talk to your manager about how you can. Buy the flatware roll-up. It's $30. It is the best investment you will ever make. Hands down. Because you will not, I can honestly say, Check out my Rolo, my Vector Connect, whatever you want to look at. Not a single traditional table knife since I bought that flatware roller. I'm selling homemakers with stainless table knives. Stainless homemakers. It's awesome. We just got to make the homemaker pieces with stainless table knives now. They're working on that, I hope. Anyone can confirm that? No? All right. <laughs> and I always recommend 8 to 12. They could have a family of two, and I'm recommending eight to 12. Because if they have a family of two, if it's just them, chances are they're having couples over a lot. They're having other couples over. They're having their family over. If they have a big family, family of four or five, they're gonna need 12. Two or three end up in the dishwasher for breakfast. Two or three are used for lunch. You don't have to wash your table knives just to have enough for dinner. So always eight to 12. Even if they live alone, eight to 12. They're a family of eight, 16 to 20, all right? Gauge it there. Obviously, if they have a family of 15, don't recommend eight to 12, okay? You guys are all smart enough to know that. Super shears. I'm always selling more than one pair of super shears. They're awesome for the kitchen. They're even better for the house. They cut that stupid plastic wrap that people insist on putting batteries in. I don't understand why. I don't know if it's like a child-proof wrap or like what it is, but it is the worst. Before I had a pair of super shears, my mom had a trimmer, and I was sawing through plastic wrap just to get the batteries with a trimmer. Yeah, the double D edge was awesome for that, but like, super shears are better. All right, so I always recommend one for the house and one for the kitchen. I gave you guys this nugget the other day, I don't know if anyone's tried it yet. We have a black, a white, and a red pair of super shears. The Blackhawks just won the Stanley Cup. Their colors are black, white, and red, make a special for that. Buy two, get one free. Mrs. Jones, the Hawks just won the Stanley Cup. Yeah, my office is trying to win the Stanley Cup too. So uh, we, we went ahead and made a Blackhawks special on our super shears. Buy two, get one free. Confirm that, I don't know if that works out with the points, but uh, figure out something that does work. Um, so make a uh, Blackhawk, make a Blackhawks special. And then you always want to show the specialty knives. So they see the homemaker pieces when you go through the names and uses. Show the baby sand tool. My favorite piece. All right? I know the North Shore office is getting unreal saying baby sand tool. Because Champions Club, that's something we go over almost every day. The Hardy Slicer. If you're showing it to a couple together, if you sell the dad, the father, the husband on a Hardy Slicer, 
he'll be totally fine with whatever his wife buys because he's getting the man's knife. If you're just selling to the wife, say, hey, your husband, you know, if she's like, oh, I don't know what my husband's going to say, Mrs. Jones, get him this hearty slicer and he won't care what else you bought. He'll love this more than he loves you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But he'll love this hearty slicer. This is going to make his barbecuing jobs so much easier. And then gift sets. Always be selling gift sets. Ben, again in our office, his mom is always buying gift sets because she knows Cutco is the best thing to give as a gift. If someone's buying a set, chances are they're going to love Cutco as a gift. If someone's buying any Cutco, they like it. Don't you think they're going to think their friends will like it? You should need to build value in giving it as a gift. It's going to last forever. They're going to think of you every time they use it. Mrs. Jones, if you give a bottle of wine, it'll be a fun night, but like... In the morning, they probably won't remember who gave them the bottle of wine, right? So uh, you go ahead and give Cutco, and they're going to remember it forever. Great thing to ask. Who, who, who do you know that's getting married in the next 6 to 12 months? Who? Not do you know anyone. Who do you know? Again, you can't say who do you know that's getting married in the six, next 6 to 12 months, and they go, no. Right? They're going to start thinking of someone. Not, do you know anybody? Because then they can say no. And then the other great question. Who do you know whose birthday is coming up in the next 12 months? Does anyone know? Is anyone's birthday here coming up in the next 12 months? Again, if you're not raising your hand, you're either sleeping, lazy, or you just didn't get the joke. So whose birthday is coming up in the next 12 months? Mine is. Is yours not? Still doesn't know how to point it out. Is yours coming up in the next 12 months? Yeah? Who else? Is yours? Yeah? All right, put it up. Here we go. Yeah, everybody's birthday is coming up in the next 12 months. Therefore, Mrs. Jones, every person she knows, birthday is going to be coming up in the next 12 months. She can't say nobody. She needs to follow it up with a person or every person. She's going to follow it up with people. Remember those names. Because when you ask for recommendations, Mrs. Jones, how about you go ahead and jot down so-and-so? There's three more recommendations at least. Oh yeah, Rebecca's birthday is coming up in uh, July. Oh, my brother's birthday is coming up in August. When you get to recommendations, oh, Mrs. Jones, how about you jot down Rebecca? And you said your brother's birthday is coming up. He'll probably love Cutco. You know, just go ahead and jot him down. More recommendations, right? That's a great question to ask. Now, awesome, this is a really great list. Now, before I go ahead and see what kind of sweet deal I can give you today, there's one more very important part. Like I said in the beginning, I'm working really hard towards my fast start. And I can only show Cutco to people who have been personally recommended to me. Anyone know what that is? The recommendation approach. Mrs. Jones just had a blast with you building her like list. You were just her personal shopper for a good 20 minutes. That was probably the most fun she'd had all week. Like driving kids to soccer stinks. Like that's no fun. All right? Making dinner, whatever these moms, I don't know what your, what your moms do really, but like that was probably the most fun she had. She could shop for whatever she wanted for 20 minutes. You made her laugh. She's going to give you more recommendations because of the amount of fun she just had with you. That's why you want to ask for recommendations there. This is also going to allow you to make a deal without her watching. All right, now I'm making a deal. So you have your like list on a separate piece of paper. You want to write out. So on a separate piece of paper, you have the customer's like list. So a piece of paper says Connor's like list with the pieces on a separate sheet of paper. You want to jot down all the pieces and then the price, the CPO, and the point value of those pieces. Again, this takes a little time, but it'll pay off in the end. Add up the CPO and divide it by five. And now you're gonna to wanna to use 40 to 70% of that above number, and that's gonna be the range of points you can give. I recommend giving them 70%. It's the best deal you can give them. I love giving my customers free cut go. It's the best deal I can give them. So I recommend going on the high end of 70%. I'm gonna explain why you can do that. Go ahead. 
This is a, uh, a mock light bust here. Customer threw down a parry knife trimmer, carver, four stainless table lamps, petite santoku, and a veggie peeler. $539, 505 CPO. So I go ahead and see what kind of sweet deal I can give them. I take the CPO, go ahead, divide it by five. I can give 101 points, but then you take 70% of that number. So I take 101 and I multiply it by 0.7. Now the reason I do that, so 505 was the CPO of every piece that they're buying that was on their life list. That's the CPO, 505 of every piece on that list. What do you want to give them for free? Something on their list or something off of their list? Mm -hmm. On their list or off their list? On their, on their list. Because if you did it the right way, it's everything they want to buy, right? Everything they're interested in. Everything. So if the ice cream scoop isn't on there, they hate the ice cream scoop because they're not interested in it, so it's not on their life list. So you want to give them something on their list. So by giving them something on their list, you're taking away one, two, three, four, five, six, seven items that they were gonna buy, which means you're decreasing your CPO. So 505 is everything they were gonna buy. You're taking items away from that 505. They're no longer purchasing those. So it no longer counts towards your CPO. So that's why you wanna multiply this by 0.7, that's why you want to take 70% of it. You're accounting for those pieces being taken off the list. Does everyone understand why I do that? Please raise your hand if you don't follow that, because that is so important. Anyone? Everyone got that? Awesome. And then you want to focus on giving the most cheap items for free. So go ahead, Count. So, I got lucky. I had 70 points to give. How convenient. The trimmer and the parry knife are 35 points each. 70 points right there. I could have given them a petite santoku at 60, but then they'd only be getting one item for free. Now they're getting two. So now I close it. Confidence is key with the close, guys. You don't have a script. You don't have a price comparison. You don't have that crutch to hold on to where it's telling you what to say, right? When you guys close on a light list, you might be used to just being like, uh, mm, uh, well, this is what you want, and this is how much it is, so yes, no, maybe so, sort of. This is exactly what you want to say. This is your light, or this is your manual. This is your light list manual right here. This handout I gave you is going to be your light list manual. What you want to say every time. So, Mrs. Jones, that parent knife trimmer... Uh, four stainless table knives, petite santoku, and peeler came out to, uh, I don't remember the price, 639 539 whatever it was. So you want to see the price there? However, today, you'll be receiving that parry knife and that trimmer for free, saving you a hundred and, I think it was ten dollars, making it a total of X. But if you break this up over the five months, ooh, that's unfortunate. you're only talking $90 today. And this is how you want to write it up for them. This is your price comparison. Again, you guys don't have somebody to compare to Wustoff. You can't be like, all right, Mrs. Jones, the Wustoff parry knife trimmer, their petite santoku, their veggie peeler, and for their stainless table knives, yeah, that would be this much. Ours isn't nearly as much as that, ours is only this. We don't have that. So this is gonna be your price comparison. So it would cost, I think that says $5.59. Today the items they're getting for free, they're saving 103 for a total of 446. But again, you can just break this up over the five months. Majority of my customers do that, making it only $90 today. How does that sound? And then, as Greg would do. Everyone should jot, ooh, go back. Everyone jot this down, because this is your price comparison. Everyone should have this. Again, I do like lists for people in our office when they call in. There's no, the customer is 20 miles away. I still write it up like this. This is just ingrained into my memory to write up any like list I do to look just like this. 
Imagine if every time you guys bought something, it was laid out for you as easy as this. So if you went shopping, it's like 20% off, and you're like, 20% well, off, you carry the one, and that would be this, and then 10 is this. So I think I'm saving this much. You don't know though, right? You just, if you're good at math and you figure it out, you use a calculator. This is telling the customer exactly what they're saving today, and exactly what it's gonna cost them each month for the next five months. Every time it should look like this. So now dropping down. All right, so she says no to that deal, right? Okay, no problem, Mrs. Jones. For a list of six or more items, what are two to three items you think you could live without? For a list of three to five items, what are one to two items you think you could live without? That's what you want to say, not. I've heard people on like lists go, uh, all right, so like, what are the pieces you really want? Oh, just those two? Awesome. All right, so that's gonna be $100 today. That stinks. You just lost 400 CPO because you asked her what she really wants. Or like, hey, what do you really not want today? Now, what are two to three items you think you could live without? Oh, I think I, I don't need that. Oh, I could probably do without that. Awesome, Mrs. Jones. Now let me go ahead and see what kind of sweet deal I can give you now. Let her go back to add in some names to the recommendation list. Say, all right, well, while I figure this out, you think you can get like three or four more people? Great, thanks. You wanna find a new deal? And then a really great way to ask for the order the second time, is this something that you think fits your budget and your cooking style a little bit more? Can't get much more, much more low key than that, can you? Not do you wanna go with this today, or this is the second deal, this is all you're getting. Take it or leave it. Is this something that you think fits your budget and cooking style a little bit more? Or a little bit better? All right. Now I'm gonna go ahead and role play what my like list would be. If you guys have a phone and wanna film it, go ahead. If you just wanna take some notes, you can do that as well. But I'm gonna have Connor come up here. And uh, Connor's gonna be the customer. I'm gonna go through briefly building the list, then I'm gonna close them on it, and I'm gonna drop down and then I'm gonna close again, okay? Blue book. Typically the customer wouldn't have the blue book. All right, um, let's see if I can do this with Can everyone hear me okay? Yeah, yeah. yeah. all right, awesome. So this is a like list as if the, uh, the customer said no to all the starter sets, okay? So you drop down through the starter sets, they say no. Okay, no problem, Mrs. Jones. What I like to do right, Mr. Jones, sorry. Okay, no problem, Connor. What I like to do right now is uh, build something called a like list. Now this isn't anything you're necessarily gonna buy today, just the pieces you're interested in. Connor, let's say, you know, it's been raining a lot lately. Say Cutco is falling from the sky, <laughs> handles first, of course. <laughs> what would you go outside and grab before your neighbors would? Or if I like ran to the bathroom right now, what would you steal from my kit? Now remember, this isn't anything you're necessarily going to buy today. Just the stuff you're interested in. Well, uh, that petite carver, that's the one that cut the rope, right? Yeah, that was the one that cut the rope. That was pretty cool. I think that yeah, one. that petite carver is awesome. That thing's going to be perfect for all those intermediate sized meats. I know you said you make a lot of chicken, so mm -hmm. rotisserie chicken is perfect for that. Uh, and how many did you want to go with uh, of those? Um, I think I think just one. One's one. Yeah. All right. Awesome. What else? Um. What What did you say the hearty slicer was for again? Hearty slicer is another great meat knife. So I know you said you barbecued a lot. That's going to be your man's knife. That's going to be your wife probably should stay away from the hearty slicer, but uh, that's going to be the one for you. All your grilling needs, all your cooked meats. That's going to be perfect. Anything your petite carver can't do. Your hearty slicer is going to be able to do. Is that something you want to throw on your list? Definitely. Awesome. How many of those were you going to go with? Well, I think if I got the petite carver too, I think I'm yeah, just, just one, one there too. <laughs> yeah, probably just one. Uh, what else? Well, I probably should get something for my wife. Um, <laughs> I think, I think she'd, she'd like the, the Santoku. Yeah, yeah, definitely. We have our, our seven inch, and then we also have our five inch uh, baby Santoku. 
<laughs> now, uh, your wife's going to love the baby Santoku, but uh, you said she cooks a lot and is making a lot of uh, salads, things like that. She's a big vegetable person. So the bigger one's probably great for her. Uh, do you want to go with the big, the baby, or maybe both? Um, yeah, I think the big one. The big one? And how many of those did you want? It's always great to have more than one chopping knife in the kitchen. Uh, do you want to go with like one or maybe a few more? Uh, I, I think, think I'm good with one. One? Yeah. Awesome. Okay, uh, what else? She definitely, I mean, we're not cutting a lot of pennies in the kitchen, but it definitely, <laughs> I see it works. I think we definitely should get some shears. Yeah, those things are awesome. I can't remember the last time a customer hasn't bought a pair of shears off me. Now, I know I talked about how they're great for the kitchen. You know that, like, plastic wrap batteries come in? <laughs> and again, it's not as tough as a penny. But uh, you saw it cut through a penny. I'm sure you can imagine what it does that stupid plastic wrap. <laughs> Still, I don't know why they wrap it in that, but it's perfect for that. A lot of my customers love super shears for the kitchen, but uh, to be honest, a lot of times they're not in the kitchen because they're actually somewhere in the house. Uh, actually, our division manager, Greg Strine, he always complains how they're always somewhere in the house. He has a few pairs, and one is always missing from the kitchen because it's floating somewhere in the house. So uh, we actually have red super shears, white super shears, and black. So how many pairs of shears were you looking to go with today? That's a pretty good point. Um, I think... I think we could definitely use two. Two? Uh -huh. Alright, awesome. Did you like the red, the black, or the white? I think I think we do one red, one black. One red, one black. Are you a Bulls fan? Bulls, big Bulls fan. Hawks fan? Yes. Awesome. We actually have a Blackhawks special going on for Super Shears right now. Um, where you can actually buy two pairs of shears and uh, get one more free. Did you maybe want to go with uh, just, I guess... So, because... Sorry, stop for a second. <laughs> we already had the like list laid out on the next slide, so... He's not, he would get a free pair, but he's not doing this. <laughs> so rewind, awesome. All right. Great, okay, so the super shear is perfect. Now what else? I, I think that's good. Yeah? Yeah. All right, perfect. Now do you mind if I f uh, recommend a few of my customers' favorite pieces? No, not at all. Awesome. So I know uh, you put down that Santoku knife. It's a great chopping knife. It's perfect for dicing and mincing. Another one my customers love is the vegetable knife. And you're probably wondering why you need two vegetable knives in the kitchen. Well, a, a big difference between the two, the Santoku is going to get things nice and fine. The vegetable knife is perfect for cubing, though. So, Mr. Jones, Mr. Connor, if, uh, if you want your soup to taste like vegetables, you're going to go ahead and use the Santoku knife. But if you want vegetables in your soup, you're going to go ahead and use the vegetable knife. Just to show you the difference. So if you're cubing carrots, cubing celery, things like that to get some bigger chunks, it's a thicker blade. So was the vegetable knife something you wanted to throw on your list? Yeah, I think Mrs. Mrs. Connor would like that. Yeah, I think Mrs. Connor would really love that. Awesome. Now, another one I love recommending is our cheese knife. So you see it actually has the holes. I like to call it the Swiss cheese knife. There's the holes in it. In a, uh. um, but it's actually our sharpest knife also. It's got the micro double D edge, so the points are closer together. And then the holes allow the cheese not to stick to the blade. You see the rounded tip on top. So it's also going to be a lot able to spread creamy cheeses. So it's great for entertaining purposes. I know you said you have some people over occasionally. It's also great in the kitchen, though, because like I said, it is our sharpest knife. It's like your second trimmer. So it's going to do all the jobs the trimmer does, just a little bit better because it's sharper. So is the cheese knife something you want to throw on your list? I don't, not, not the cheese knife. No? no? So. Okay, awesome. No problem. Now another one is the four-inch paring knife here. So my customers love the four-inch paring knife because it's like a straight-edge trimmer. So it's going to be great for all those soft or all those harder shelled things that you need a straight edge, all the raw meats, things like that. Uh, it's a really nice size. It's bigger than our two and three fourths inch paring knife, so you can use it on the cutting board. Is the four inch paring knife something you wanted to go for today? So you don't really use paring knives that often. No, you guys are kind of the bigger knife people. Yeah. Yeah, you're going to love your Santoku then, which is awesome. <laughs> and then the last one I always recommend are table knives. So as you see, the table knife there has a black handle. Um, black handles are all right. You saw how well it cut the leather. So we actually have a stainless table knife also, and um, you can see a picture of it here in our uh, stainless flatware, wherever that is. So new blue book, sorry. Uh, wherever that is, and our stainless, uh, it's awesome because you know how easily stainless scratches, right? I mean, you drop it somewhere and you can get a scratch, you yeah. can chip, anything like that. It doesn't look nice forever, but with the forever guarantee, you can send back the stainless table knives whenever you want. They'll be polished and resharpened for free. So your stainless table knives are really going to be timeless. They're going to look nice forever. Hmm. So um, how many people do you have in your family, Connor? I have four. Four? So a family of four, I typically recommend eight to 12 table knives. 
because you know you use two for breakfast, maybe one for lunch, and uh, maybe one before dinner. Then you know, just making a snack or whatever it might be. You want to make sure you have at least four come dinner time. And if you ever have some people over for entertaining purposes, you're going to want to have at least eight because you don't know how many people you're going to have over. So uh, did you want to throw some table knives on your list? Yeah, yeah. I think I think it would be good. Eight, eight stainless. Yeah. Awesome. Well, that's a really great list. Now, I'm just going to show you a few of our other pieces here. So, um, this one here is our fisherman's solution. So, who do you know that likes to fish, Connor? Oh, my dad really likes to fish. Yeah? Yeah. Does he, do you know, does he have probably an older fishing knife, one from me when he was a kid? Yeah, I think his dad, his dad gave him one. Yeah. <laughs> so, our fishing knife is awesome because it's got the flexible blade. You can pull the blade out for six, seven, eight, uh, and then nine inches. And it's still flexible, then it locks into place. The blade also comes out. For uh, easy cleaning, so you can wash the blade and the handle separate. You know how stinky a uh, fishing knife handle gets. Yeah. And then it has this nice uh, carrying case where you can sharpen your stone or sharpen your uh, hook as well as your knife with a sharpening stone on the back. And then it also has somewhere to clamp the fish when filleting it. Uh, and then again, the carrying case hooks right onto your belt, so if you need to cut the line, it exposes a bit of the blade. Now, I know you said your dad loves to fish. Is his birthday coming up in the next like 12 months? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. well, this would make a really great birthday present for your dad. So, you want to go ahead and throw a fisherman's solution down? Yeah, I think you'd actually like that. Awesome, <laughs> perfect. Now, these are our garden tools as well as our barbecue tools. So, our customers love both of these. Uh, were either of these something you wanted to throw down? No. No, I all right. So. Now, we have our gift set. So, actually, Cutco is the number one closing gift for realtors in America, but it also makes for great wedding, birthday, and just entertaining gifts in general. So, uh, Connor, who do you know that's getting married in the next 6 to 12 months? My sister is, actually. Is she? Yeah. That's awesome. When's she getting married? Later on in the summer, yeah. August. Nice. And then do you know anyone else other than your dad whose birthday is coming up in the next 12 months? Yeah, I mean, I know quite a few people. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> awesome. So, like I said, makes for a great birthday present as well as wedding gifts. You can get them engraved for a wedding. Um, huh. But then also it's going to last forever. So I'm sure you probably have given bottles of wine before as gifts. Yeah. Makes for a really awesome night, right? <laughs> In the morning, they probably don't remember who gave them the bottle of wine, though. Well, I'd hope so. But... So with Cutco, they're going to use it every day for the rest of their life. So they're always going to be thinking about you. So if you were to give a gift set, which one do you want to go throw on your list? Well, now that I think about it, my sister, she has a lot of people over pretty often. Um, I think that, is there an entertainer pack? Is that what's called? Oh, the thing? one right down here? Yeah. That's going to be perfect, especially for weddings, because it uh, gets them started on the essential tools in their kitchen, an ice cream scoop, a peeler, pizza cutter with a movable blade, and then uh, a soft grip cheese knife, so they can use it for entertaining, but also in the kitchen. Uh, now, I know you said you know some people getting, uh, or whose birthday's coming up, and you know your sister getting married. How many entertainer bags do you want to put down? Um, hmm. I think two, actually. Two? two? Uh, yeah. Awesome. Like, get my gifts ahead of They're going to love, love that gift. All right, well, Connor, that's a really great list. And uh, now before I go ahead and see what kind of sweet deal I can give you today, there is one more very important part. Like I said at the beginning, I'm working really hard towards my fast start. And uh, I can only show cut go. And then go right into it. All right? So go ahead, Connor, hit. No, no applause. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Appreciate it. Go ahead. All right. So I, I go ahead and I wrote down as, as Connor said things. I wrote them down for him. This is my page now. Now I go over and I make my own page. Where I put the things he got or wants to get. And then um, I wrote down the price, the CPO, and the points. Added them up. And uh, it does say two, and then it says eight here. Got cut off. But, um, so go ahead and next. So now I see what kind of deal I can give him. 279. Oh, sorry. 1395 CPO. Divide that by five. 279 points would be 100%. But again, what percent do you want to use? 70%. So I went ahead and multiplied that by 0.7 to get 195 points for free. That's where I can max out at. I like Connor. He's a good guy occasionally. So I'm going to go ahead and give him all 70% because he's really helped me out. That was an awesome list. If he went with this today, I'd be really pumped. So I find what I can get for free. You want to go ahead and back for a second? So using the points, I figure out what I can get for free. That adds up to 195. All right? I believe those add up exactly to 195. How convenient. 
So I figured out, so I could have given him like 140 and 50, and that would have been two awesome items for free, right? But I could have given him three. He's going to like getting three items for free a lot more than just two. So now you can go ahead and hit again. <coughs> One more. <coughs> All right. So Connor is doing recommendations. Awesome. Thank you so much, Connor. Those names are really going to help me out. I'll give you uh, some time at the end, though, to add a few more. But uh, thanks so much. I really appreciate it. Now I went ahead and saw what kind of awesome deal I can give you today. So that petite carver you love for all your intermediate uh, foods, that hearty slicer, the man's knife, the barbecue knife, uh, the seven inch santoku for your wife, her chopping, dicing, mincing tool, those two pairs of super shears, one for the house, one for the kitchen, those eight stainless table knives that you know you're gonna love and they're gonna last you forever, always look nice, that vegetable knife that's gonna allow you to uh, cube all your vegetables and just have that other chopping knife in your kitchen, the fisherman's solution for your dad, and then those two entertainer packs for your, uh, for your sister. And then just one to hold on to for a birthday one day. Well, all that came out to fourteen seventy eight. dollars 78 Go ahead again. Oh, my God. Yeah, cut off. All right. Well, all that came out to fourteen seventy eight. That's what it would say up there. Very tough. Fourteen seventy eight. However, today, you're going to be getting... Let me go back. I just forgot what you're getting for free. <laughs> today, you're going to be getting the Petite Carver, that Hardy Slicer, and that 7-inch Santoku for your wife, all for free, saving you $323 for a total of $1,155. You just break that up over the five months, and you're only talking two, uh, $260 today. How does that sound? Well, Ty, I really, really like the pieces on the list, but I think that's a little too much for me today. Okay. Yeah, no problem. So, um... What were like two to three items on that list that you think you could live without? Well, so I mean, <laughs> I think go without one <laughs> pair of shears. And okay, then... yeah, yeah, you probably, I mean, one will get the job done for sure. And then if you wanted to add a second pair, you can always add that on later. Yeah, and then my dad's birthday was just this last month. So you said 12 months. So I guess <laughs> oh, I can take that yeah. off. I can hold off on the fisherman solution. And then, um... I guess I don't need to hold on to an entertainer pack either. Yeah, you can probably give one to your sister, and then if you want to get another one as like a birthday present later on, you definitely can. Well, awesome. Now let me go ahead and see uh, what kind of deal I can give you now, and just go ahead and feel free to add like three or four names to that list you have. So I added up again. $1,118.1059 CPO. All right, Connor, so I went ahead and just figured out what it would be without some of those items. So did it? Oh, sorry, I thought it was going to... All right, so today it came out to uh, those pieces, and then I, again, would walk through what he's getting, and what he's going to use them for. Those came out to $1,118, but today you're getting this and this for free, saving you $235 for a total of $883, and just break that up over the five months. You're only talking about $200 today. How does that sound? Yeah, I think I can go with that. That's manageable. Awesome. You're going to love your cut go. Then I begin writing it up, get them to add a few more names. Awesome appointment right there. So that's my like list. All right. Any questions about anything I did there? Anything I said? Who noticed that I absolutely followed that handout in your hand, basically word for word? <laughs> Instead. Have noticed it? Anyone else? <laughs> Got some in the back. Sweet. All right. So before I'm done, I'm going to go over Cutco owners and upgrading Cutco owners. Okay. Again, like I said, this made my push. This is going to make a lot of your pushes as well. Just because you're going to see a lot of people with Cutco. So the first thing you want to do when you see a Cutco owner, also if you see a Cutco owner, you walk into the house, you see they have a homemaker, you should begin salivating from the mouth, you should be so upset. You know it's going to be a big order if they have a big set, because they love Cutco. And if they have a few pieces, you should get excited because you're going to upgrade them. Okay. So you want to have them take out all their Cutco, and then just walk them through each piece. Explain to them what each of their pieces are used for, and just talk to them about what they're missing. I've had customers who have a petite carver, a carver, a hardy slicer, 
and a boning knife. Like, Mrs. Jones, you must cook a lot of meats. Actually, no, I actually use the hearty slicer for all my vegetables. Oh, no, 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 Mrs. Jones. I'll show you what's best for vegetables in just a few minutes. Start thinking about what they don't have, the uses they're missing, because that's what you're going to want to upgrade them with. Then you want to cover the forever guarantee. There's nothing that builds more value in Cutco, in my opinion, than the forever guarantee. Yeah, it cuts, it's awesome, it's got a thermal resin universal wedge lock handle. That's all great. This will take them out of the cutlery market forever. That, in my opinion, builds the most value, so go back over the guarantee. And then you want to present to them the preferred customer upgrade. All of the preferred customer upgrade. For customers that just have pieces. Okay, Mrs. Jones, as a Cutco owner, you're eligible for something called a preferred customer upgrade. All this means is we would take a look at your favorite set here, see what pieces you're missing, and then see what kind of sweet deal I can give you to complete this set. So, Mrs. Jones, if you were interested in a set today, which would it be? Oh my god, that one's huge. I would love that really big one. <laughs> awesome, Mrs. Jones. That's a lot of our customers' favorite sets. Set. set. Or you're going to get customers that are like, that homemaker looks really nice. But again, which set would you go with today? Now, if you have a customer with a set, who's had that where they walk into a house and they just see like, Boom, a nice homemaker plus eight chilling on the countertop. And I'm sure a lot of you guys are like, mm, shoot. Well, there goes this base pay on this one. Darn it. She has a huge house. I was going to sell her so much. No, you need to be, yeah, she has a homemaker plus eight. Awesome. I'm about to upgrade this girl to a complete set with flatware. Oh, yeah. All right. So as a cut girl owner, you're eligible for something called a preferred customer upgrade. This means we would look at your set and upgrade you to one of our larger sets. Now you would only receive the pieces you're missing, and I promise Mrs. Jones, I'll give you the best deal possible. Now something that's optional, it's up to you guys. Darren Burns in our office used to do this all the, all the time in Eureka, Illinois. Who knows where Eureka, Illinois is? Oh wow, that's impressive. Back of the room. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> well the rest of you guys that are up here, Eureka, Illinois, Southern Illinois, he sold 50 grand down there. You guys think it's hard selling up here? Imagine Eureka, Illinois. All right. Now, uh, he would take the block from all his customers that he upgraded. He had a trunk full of blocks. And then Darren was able to show a galley block, a starter block, a homemaker block, a signature block on all his appointments because he just collected them over time. So Mrs. Jones, one part of the preferred customer upgrade, you just have to give me your block. You'll actually get a brand new one in the mail. Uh, it takes about a week and a half, so just like, you know, hide your cut coat before then because you don't want to destroy it in a drawer. And then uh, when you get your new block, you'll, you'll love it. And then you just take their block. It's awesome. You need to build value in sets when upgrading. You need to sell them on a block, all right? So if you sell them on a block, the way you want to do that, Mrs. Jones, ooh, I want to ask Who's raising their hand? I had a quick question. Nope, no questions yet. Hold on. Um, Mary, what's your favorite car? Um, what's your dream car? Like an Audi. What? An Audi. What? An Audi. What? An Audi. Audi what? Oh, I'm not sure. A convertible Audi. All right. What's that really sweet convertible Audi? R8 or yeah, A8? It's, the, it's yeah. the R8. R8. All right. She wants an R8. That's awesome. Imagine if she pulled up the SC2 in an R8. That'd be awesome. <laughs> All right, so Mary, what's your dream car? Audi R8. Okay, great. Well, let's say you went out and bought an Audi R8. Would you park it on the street? No. No, you put it in the garage, right? Yeah. Of course. Well, today you're investing in the Audi R8 of cutlery. Don't you want a garage to store it in? And that's why we have our wood blocks. Ooh. They're going to protect your knives like your garage is going to protect your R8. Boom, you just sold her on a block? She's got to buy a set. I once sold Mrs. Heckman. This was in the push. Sold her on a baby Santobu and a block. She was forced to buy a signature set. I was like, mm, oh yeah. I'm getting sicky with it because you want a block and a baby Santobu. You have no other choice. 
Don't feel like you're putting your customer in a corner and you're like, you got to buy it. They see the value in a block and they see the value in the baby sample. So they buy a signature. All right, sell them on the block, cut leather again, create value in table knives, show them the steak knife. Everyone get a steak knife in your sample kit. All right? So you're going to sell signatures and ultimates when you have a steak knife to show. Jake Yale, just learning how to close on signatures and ultimates. I'm like, hey, Jake, don't even show that table knife option. Customers aren't going to want that anymore. We have steak knives. They want steak knives. All right, so sell them on that. Then talk about the importance of the pieces they're missing. Okay? So talk about those pieces that they don't have. So Mrs. Jones, yeah, that homemaker is really great. But um, the butcher knife, it's good for a lot of tough foods. But, you know, once you grill some stuff and it's really, really tough, Again, not that you, not that you uh, make tough meat or anything, Mrs. Jones. But uh, that's why you're going to need your hearty slicer. With our double D edge, that's going to go through all your barbecued meats. Mrs. Jones, you have the petite chef there. It's really great for uh, like chopping, dicing, mincing all your vegetables. But the baby sample oh, is so cute. Can you say no to a cute knife, Mrs. Jones? But it's also really lightweight. It's going to be great for all your herbs, spices. And again, it does all the jobs the petite chef does. It just looks a lot cooler doing it. So sell them on the knives they don't have. All right, now how to upgrade and how to close. You want to build a like list in order to upgrade them. So you don't build a like list like I showed you before. You just write it down like I showed you before. All right, and don't forget the block. I've had customers forget the block, and I've also had, I actually heard a funny story, totally unrelated to the like list. A rep in our office last year thought sets didn't come with a block, so he would sell a homemaker plus eight, and then sell the customer a block also. Customers are getting two blocks in all their orders. <laughs> Funny story. Nothing to do with like lists, but uh, don't forget the block. And then find out what you can get for free using the point system. So that's where I say you can uh, give them a really sweet deal. Figure out what on that upgrade you can get for free. The same way, divide it by five, 70% of that. Same thing I showed you before. All right, go ahead. All right, this is what it would look like if you're getting siggy with it. Who wants to get siggy with it over the push? So interesting when not everyone raises their hand. Just don't understand. So this is from a galley to a uh, signature. And this is 10 steak knives. All right, if they have a galley set, they probably have never seen a steak knife before. So they bought the galley set before we had steak knives. All right, so show them everything. And this is how you would write it up. Okay, you get the Siggy block. So 1495, 1433 CPO. Go ahead. All right, and again, I got to remember this next time getting cut off. But you're going to want to put the price on top. So what the set usually costs. So signature with steak knives, right on top what it usually costs, right what they're saving. So what they're saving is what they already have and what they're getting for free. That's what they're saving off this set. And then you want to write what it comes out to today. And then break it up over the five months. The exact same way as the like list, you're just showing what the set usually costs. Go ahead. All right, upgrades their fat CPO. Straight up fat CPO. If you want to get some boom sauce during your push, you're going to upgrade your customers, okay? So a signature to an ultimate, anything to an ultimate is just too much CPO. I didn't want to take the time to add it up. All right? And if you're talking steak knives also, it's even more CPO. I didn't want to take the time to add it up. So go ahead. Again, if you're not upgrading your customer, but they have Cutco, just build a normal like list. If they're like, no, I don't want to go with that upgrade. All right, Mrs. Jones, then what I like to do is just build a like list. What are some things? And you say the exact same thing. Just build a normal like list. Figure out what you can give them for free. Now, I can still give you a really sweet deal, even though you didn't go with the preferred customer upgrade. All right? 70 plus percent of your orders during this push are going to be like lists or upgrades. 70 plus percent. You guys can get unreal at selling sets. That's going to be awesome three out of ten appointments. If you can get awesome at a like list, that's going to be awesome 7 out of 10 appointments. I sold $20,000 last year for SC2 while being gone for three days because my like list was better than anybody else's. I'll put my like list up against anyone in the company. I know that sounds weird, but I'll do a like list off with someone. 847-800-1998. Give me a call. I'll have a like list off with any of you guys. Anyone in the company because mine's better than anyone else's. And that's how I had a big push. 70 plus percent of your orders. You gotta build it, you gotta close on it, and then you gotta upgrade them. One more, John Wooden. It's the little details that are vital. 
Little things make big things happen. Guys, you want to have a big push? Whatever that means for you. Whether it's breaking the record or whether it's $2,000. You want to make big things happen? You got to start with the little things. You got to start with saying what else? You got to start with saying how many? You got to number the page one to 10. You got to learn how to upgrade. It's those little things that are going to make this big push happen for you guys. So get out there and kick some butt.